Well, hello, hello, my dear viewers, my dear friends. Ka, ka, ka. It is I, Andre, and I welcome you back to the channel, to this week's chapter of One Piece 974, of its name, Onwards to Onigashima. And if my little theatrics has played you out, yes, I was very much fascinated by the reveal of this week's chapter and we will soon talk about that when we get there. Moving on along, we have the cover story of Gang Bages Oh My Family Volume 22 and yay! Goatee did it! He saved Chiffon! Yay! No, seriously. Props for him. He... He turned around. Like, he went from being defeated by those guys to actually going there and do it. And he gone and did it. And yeah, his, he has blood smeared all over his shirt, all over his sleeve. And all over his face, so he did it. Chiffon's happy, and yay, yay, Goaty, you're the boss. One thing that worries me about not worries me, but I thought about that while whilst preparing for the video is that this is volume twenty two of the cover story. Usually the cover stories, if I'm not mistaken, they have around to twenty seven, twenty eight to thirty. 30 chapters, 30 volumes, as they're known. So, if this is following that same, and I, and I assume it does, the cover story isn't being that surprising so far. I think the big reveal of the cover story, because they always have big reveals sometimes, the big reveal of the cover story is yet to come. So, I'm assuming it's going to last a little bit more than that, they got Chiffon now, so I'm assuming that they're either going to escape Dressrosa next next volume or something, or they're gonna deal with something in Dressrosa. And then in the next in the volume after that, so that would be 976, assuming there's no there's no other covers next next week. It would be 9, uh, 976 or 977 if there's another thing on 76. So yeah, they'll leave Dress Rose and then after after that they will find Lola right away. I don't think Oda will just make them go on another voyage. Because now there's no reverie. So I don't know. Maybe they will cross the red line. I don't think they'll need to cross the red line. I think Lola is in the new world. And you know what would be funny? Is if would be if Lola was actually the one marrying uh, on that marriage that Shanks and his crew were on a mysterious abandoned island in the New World on one of the last cover pages that made the sweep around the world to the different islands and the different allies of the Straw Hats. And we saw that Shanks and his crew were on a mysterious unknown island in the New World attending a marriage. And curiously enough, the only guy from the Red Hair Pirates that wasn't shown was Lucky Rowe. So... Machinations... Conspiracy theories that Lola is married with Lucky Rowe. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine Chiffon and Beji meeting Lola and she's like, Oh, meet my husband. He's Lucky Rowe. He's from a very fine pirate, pirate crew. You know, you might have heard about them. They're the red haired pirates. And Beji's like, Oh my god. I just left the territory of a Yonko and I walked straight into the arm of another arm because Shanks only has one arm, so. And I walked straight into the arm of another one. And Shanks is like, Hey, Benji, so you're Lola's brother-in-law, so come, drink, join our crew. 
<laughs> and Benji's like, do I have to? And Shanks is like, drink or else. And Benji's like, yay, huzzah. And so the cover story ends with Benji's crew flying Shanks' collars. <laughs> that would be amazing. Because imagine... Uh, imagine in the final battle, you know, everyone arrives, the, the, the fleet, the, the other supernovas that Luffy allies with, Law and, and Kid, uh, maybe others too, but uh, so far, maybe only Bonnie and Uroj. I don't see Apu. Uh, I think Apu will be dealt with in Wano, but that's another thing. And Hawkins maybe as well. Uh, so yeah, Hawkins might join Blackbeard. That would be amazing to see. Um, so yeah, anyway, imagine if Benji arrives and he's like, Hey, Strohan, I came to help you. And he's flying Shanks' collars. And then all of a sudden, Red Force appears behind Nostra Castello. And, uh, you know, Red Force is a massive ship. We haven't seen comparisons between Red Force and Nostro Castello, but I imagine that Red Force is a tad bigger than Nostro Castello. So imagine Red Force appears from behind us. Luffy's like, "Oh my God, Shanks, what are you doing here?" And Benji's like, "Oh yeah, I, 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 I'm allied with Shanks," like begrudgingly admitting that he's allied with Shanks. And Luffy's like, "What? You're allied with Shanks? That's so cool." Shanks is like my best friend. And Benji is like, shut up, shut up, shut up. So yeah, that would be very funny. Because otherwise, I don't see a lot of ways for Benji to appear in the final battle. But that's not here, not there. Let's move forward. I wasted a lot of time speaking up the cover story. So we have a small flashback with, between Hiyori and Njiro. And this is the first question that's answered in this chapter. Which is the fact that Komurasaki's death was always planned between Kyoshiro and Hiyori. He's, telling, he's asking her to always carry blood bags with her under her kimono, so, when he, so if he eventually needs to, he can cut her and fake her death. So that's exactly what happened. A lot of us also predicted that along with predicting that he was Denjiro, but some of us all always predicted that he was in some capacity helping her and the Alliance not working against them, even if they were not considering him to be Denjiro. But now it just all plays together. And it's it's good. It's it's a page, no, no more than a page. The, the Manga Plus separation is a little wonky, but I think this is but a page. It is a page, but it is... Mm, a very neatly page that just boom, puts the nail on that question and question solved. This was planned between them and that explains how it was actually done. So no, no need for more. I'm satisfied. Next up, we have another small flashback. This time around from a few months ago when Kinemon, Kanjuro, Raizo, Kikunojo, Nomonosuke arrived. Which is funny to think. Months have passed. Like, we don't know exactly how long ago they arrived. We only know that from the moment Kinemon met Luffy and the others in Punk Hazard, I think that no more than a month passed through all, at most, because Punk Hazard was, was done like in three days, two to three days, or something like that. Dress Rosa. Dress Rosa was half a day. And then you have the three days for the rest. So Dress Rosa in total was like four days. Zo, they took a week to get to Zo, I think. So that's another week. That's already like two weeks on all that. They spent two or three days in Zo as well. Then maybe another week or so to get to Whole Cake. So yeah, about a month, month and a half. They spent a few days in Whole Cake as well. 
like two or three days as well in Whole Cake Island. It's 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 mental to think that the actual sagas only take place in a very short period of time, and here we are covering Dress Rosa within two and a half years. Like Dress Rosa lasted two and a half years, and Wano. I don't know how how long Wano has been going, but it has been a lot. This chapter. I think it was Arthur from the Library of O'Hara in his most recent chapter sequence. He uh, pointed out the date when this flashback began, and if I'm not mistaken, you can you guys can check out check that out for yourselves. I believe he said that this flashback started on September the fourteenth of last year, so. That is like a lot. It's like six months or something. So that it was September. No, September the nineteenth. Yes, yeah, September the nineteenth of um, no the the fifteenth maybe. Yeah, no, it was September the fifteenth of last year. So that's the three weeks of September, all of October, November, December, with the with the with the breaks. January, February, and the two first weeks of March. Whew! That was a long while we stayed without Luffy, but the chapter is going to address that in a moment. So we see Orochi all worried up, well, all worked up because they are back. The samurais are back. And he gives out the orders for the these men to patrol the coast. Kaido wishes them to be brought alive so he can question them. Little does he know that they have no clue about the Void Sentry or anything. And then... Then starts the meat and brushes of, of this chapter. We get the explanation of the traitor's backstory. So, basically, the person in question was persecuted for being a Korozumi. This is big. Not as big as I... I mean, I'm not making it that big. Because for me, the reasoning is a bit wonky. I understand it. I just can't get behind it. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. But yes, this person saw his parents die on stage right in front of him during the Kurozumi persecution. So this person eventually got in contact with with Orochi, Higurashi and uh, the other the, 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 the Shamisen guy whose name I forgot I admit because you know we don't even know how he was killed. We assume he was killed alongside alongside Higurashi, or he died of natural causes, but we don't actually know. He had to die because the Bari Bari was in circulation until Bartolomeo. So yeah, and Hirochi gives this guy his fruit, which is a very cool fruit, by the way. I really love the design of the fruit. Looks like a chestnut. That's cool. And Hiroshi sets him a mission, a role. And being an actor, this person is overjoyed with the possibility of just dying in a role of a lifetime. And he explains how every time he went to Odin's castle to borrow money, that person would give him twice the amount. And that's how he was able to join forces with Kaido. And the information about the raid. And this last panel of the of flashback is what's really impressive about the traitor and his personality. Orochi mentions that the part that made him truly insane was at the execution. He was fully prepared to die alongside Odin. He has no mind of his own. He lived as a perfect vassal of Kozuki until I stopped him. And he sent me information all the while. He was so faithful it was almost eerie. And this is the f this is the big part because, and as we'll see later, the person who who's betraying. He doesn't he, he doesn't think he was doing anything wrong. 
And he was just, you know, I never wished, he even says it, I didn't wish you any harm. I didn't want to see you dead. Things just played out that way. I was just on the side feeding Orochi information. I did nothing wrong. I didn't wish for anything. Things just played out the way they played. And that is really, really scary. Because if we think about it, one thing is when you have a villain like Doflamingo, like Orochi, like, like Blackbeard, who is evil, but they are aware that they're evil. They know they, and they do evil things just because they are evil. Another thing is a guy who's doing evil things, betraying his family, betraying his friends, and they doesn't think he's doing something wrong. And that pains it all the more. At first, when I read the chapter, I was like, that is some very weak reasoning. That the reason he gives for, for being a traitor, and i sorry, I think the sun just went out of it and we all got a bit dark. So I'm sorry, I'm trying to 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 fix it as I go. Um, where was I? Okay, so the part that makes it all... I mean, I don't know. It's just... When I first read the chapter, that's where I was. I was like, okay, this guy's reasoning is a bit wonky. Just because you're from a, the Kurozimu family, I mean... You could have changed your mind. You lived so much with them. You could have changed your mind. And he kind of did. But he also kind of didn't. We'll get there in a bit. So we now have the recap of the situation. It has been 20 years. Odin has been dead for 20 years. Wano is in some deep doo-doo. And his retainers left into the future, gathered allies, the minks, the straw hats, the harp pirates, destroyed Caesar's smile factory and destroyed Don Flamingo's reign of underworld terror. They joined up in Wano, joined all the allies, the Yakuza bosses, the samurais, and they were supposed to meet at Port Hokage on the evening of the fire festival to go to Onigashima. But that didn't happen. And here we are in the middle of the storm and six, seven, sorry, seven samurai decide to set out to sea on a storm in a rowboat. Yes, uh, in a rowboat. They are samurai, they don't understand about the sea. <laughs> And, yes, the narrator explains the situation once again. It's funny how it has been so long that we need the narrator to put us up to date with everything. So, yeah. Kinemon tries to encourage Momonosuke, telling him that there is no other way. They need to do this now because they'll never have another chance. Momonosuke is crying, begging them to stop. He doesn't want to lose them. And that's what would, ha would have happened if things haven't turned out the other way. <laughs> but then, as we say in Portuguese, the coin dropped. Or <sighs> One of them has to be the traitor. The question is brought up by Kanjiro, <laughs> surprisingly. <laughs> Not, not surprisingly, but, you know, now that we know who he is, we, we, we kind of start seeing, oh, you sneaky son of a gun. Kinemon is like, I don't want to know it. I don't, I don't care. At this point, I don't even care who it is. I just want to be done with this. Kiko is like, but how can you if, if you can't just chop off his head, then what can we do? But 
Kinemon says something that I just noticed now and it makes perfect sense. But whoever it is, they will not confess. Oh, wow, this is... Oh my god, I, I did not see this. I'm seeing this now. They will not confess. And then Kanjiro comes out of the gate and says, Let us clear it all up by acknowledging that it was me. Ka ka ka! <laughs> it's Kanjiro. Yes. It was Kanjiro all along. Yay! All of you guys who said Kanjiro, props for you. Here's a mint candy. Here, take it. Uh, <laughs> why? Like, how? I mean, it's not like how. It, it was expected by a lot of us. I keep referring to my... To my video on the one o trader, I had this comment by user one o nine that it just the it just detailed the explanation on why Kanjiro was the spy, and yes, everything checked out with what he said. So the surprises are not that big. Honestly, the surprise is not that big. The way the reveal is handled is big. Now, like, the, this transition is amazing. And I cannot wait to see if the anime does it justice. I've been stressing this in, in the last chapters about the anime adaptation. But really, I want the anime to succeed on this part. It needs to succeed on this part. So they all start asking, but why? How did you do it? You nearly died with us. And he was like, exactly. That, that would have been the, the grand finale of my role. My final wish. But then Orochi asked me to, you know, no, don't die. And he says, I shared joys and sorrows with you all, earning your absolute trust, hating none of you and meaning no harm. The one thing I did was continually send Lord Orochi information and we were like, what? This is the thing. He doesn't think he was doing anything wrong. And then Kiku asks, why would you do such a thing? And he's like, my name is Kurozumi Kanjiro. Need I say more? This was the thing that got me when I first read. Uh, again, very weak reasoning because if he really did leave all, he leave he lived all these things with them, all the joys, all the sorrows, earned the trust, not hating them. Why did he not change? That is the thing, you know, because it, it wouldn't be a first for Oda to redeem villainous characters. Kanjiro could have been redeemed if, after they returned from the past, he had stopped feeding Orochi information. Many things would have been different. Or maybe he could continue to feed information. But somewhat false information. Some false other truth. <clears throat> because now it all makes sense how Orochi found out about the prison. How, Orochi, how Kaido found out about Raizo in Zo. Everything makes sense now, but... It wasn't because of Law and the, the crew that the, that the plan was leaked. It was because of him. And also the changes made by Yasui's death were foiled by him. And... Uh, and now, out of nowhere, all of a sudden, the Beast Pirates appear. On three massive ships. 
which I gotta say I love these ships. I really hope that they keep doing the model ships collection because I have almost all of them and they are so cool to assemble and so cool to look at. I, I, I want the supernovas for example, the supernova ships and I have I have big month ships. I have all the Onko ships minus teaches which only has the the, the, the the dinghy thing, not the, the most recent ones, and Kaidos because it doesn't exist. So yeah, Bandai, if you, if Bandai or Bampresto, if you ever see this video, please more model kits. I love the Bampresto model kits for One Piece. They are great. Hashtag not sponsored. But definitely up for sponsoring. Just FYI. Ah. <clears throat> ah, so yeah. The beast pirates appear and they're like, oh, they're they're actually stupid to sail in this storm. And there's our spy among them and, and Kanjiro is like, indeed, here I am. Hello, fellas. I, Watashiwa Kitatsu or whatever the hell All Might says. I don't speak Japanese. I am here. And this is, this is a very good part. Kinemon just goes like and lops Kanjiro's head off. But then we find out that it's actually Ning Clone and... Double twist, Kanjiro could paint well all the time. Even, even, even Inuarashi is like, Huh? But how can it be? The Kanjiro we knew couldn't paint that well. Well, surprise, surprise, that was another thing that people picked up on. Is the fact that he eats with his, with his right hand and then he painted with his left hand. And he's cl when he's clearly right-handed, but and then he's painting with I, I can't even move the brush to make a proper movement with left hand so it makes perfect sense how his drawings would come out all wrinkly and and bad I mean not that I'm an excellent painter myself I could do Kanjiro's drawings left-handed drawings in my right hand but bah, this guy is just it's just it was very well done I gotta say it was very well done the whole traitor thing was handled pretty well. Even if the solution was quite obvious from a certain point on. I believe that the situation was handled pretty, pretty well. Everything played out as it should have played out. And again, even if the answer was obvious, that doesn't diminish the, the impact of the scene. Because... Most people were still, even people who thought that Kanjiro was a traitor, most people were still expecting, no, no, it cannot be one of them. It can't be one of the scabbers, but it ended up being. That's the impact. It's that even though the proof all points, all points to Kanjiro, there was still hope, and I'm sorry, there was still hope that it was not him. Ah. I really enjoyed this, but I gotta move on, otherwise. Um, then we get... Oh, <laughs> then we get to the end. Oh, I love this ending. We start hearing some voices. Some voices in the storm. Ah, hey, I slept and I'm awake. That's when I'm toughest. Who could it be? And then we see that bloody smile, that... Bloody smile and bloody scar with some new coat on. We see the straw hat pirates, Sunny, the thousand Sunny, shooting the left side of Kaido's ship. And then we see him appear in the waves, like we leaping in the waves. Then we see from the depths rising the hot pirates, Polar Tang. The yellow submarine of Trafalgar D. Vassalo. With, as well, a new coat, a new fluffy coat that many people have pointed out that it looks a hell of a lot like Corazon's feathered coat. I can't wait to see them in full body render. My mind is ready, oh, the please bless us with, with the full with the full body renders of them next chapter. And then, from the right side, we have the captain, Eustace Kid of the Heart of the Heart Pirates. <laughs> oh, God. Too much excitement. 
we see Eustace Captain Kid of the Kid Pirates and their Victoria Punk shooting the right side of the Beast Pirates ship. And in an unprecedented turn of events that not even the traitor was aware, when you're at sea, you deal with pirates. Boom! Trafalgar D. Vassalo, Monkey D. Luffy and Eustace Kid. They're on the case because samurais are no good at sea. Pirates, however, whew, that's their field. But yes, you have three tiny ships against Kaido's massive beast pirates ships. And these seem to be, I don't know if this is Kaido's flagship, if one of these is Kaido's flagship, because we know that Jack has the mammoth, Queen has the, the Brontosaurus, I imagine. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that King has a Pteranodon ship. There was a Scorpion one we saw in Zoe. Let me check the wiki. I shouldn't be doing this because I'm sure you're already over <laughs> the the mark by a lot. But uh, so yeah, we have the mammoth, and when the mammoth appeared, we saw four ships. With the scorpion, with the scorpion figurehead. We have the mammoth and we have four scorpion figureheads. Then we have we have Quinn's ship, which has the 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 Brontosaurus's neck. And yeah, I mean I don't think that this is Kaido's flagship. Because they're three of the same. I'm expecting Kaido's flagship to have a different figurehead, at least. Like a dragon's figurehead or something, like an Oni's figurehead, I don't know. I just, I kind of don't want this to be Kaido's flagship. It would be a little lackluster, especially since the fact that there are at least three of them. So, it's kind of like Blackbeard's crew, where you have the division ships that are very similar, if not equal, I don't remember them all that well. But I expect the Saber of Zvek, which is the main ship, to be like this magnanimous ship worthy of uh, worthy of um, of Blackbeard. So yeah, this is how the chapter ends. New clothes for everyone. Ah. <laughs> I cannot wait. I honestly cannot wait. Luffy seems to have one of those high collar coats. Law, as I said, he appears to have a a a feathered coat. And Kid is just Kid. Kid normally sports those feather coats already. And this is very funny because this week Kid was revealed to be in Pirate Warriors 4. So yeah, that, that was very that was very convenient. I mean, come on, let's let's let, let's admit it. That was highly convenient. I mean, on the week that we get back to the present, and that you reveal that they're all they they are all aligned. Like, ah, come on, Bandai, we're on to you. I just hope he's not the last character. Uh, okay, that that's another thing. <laughs> okay. <sighs> I don't even know where to start. This chapter was amazing. And I kept the pencil on my head all this time. That is amazing. So, I assume I, I'm close to one hour of video. <laughs> oh, my girlfriend's going to kill me. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, so, I hope you have enjoyed this chapter as much as I have. Because, Jesus Christ, this was an amazing chapter. Again, the reveal was not that surprising. A lot of the community was already on board with the whole Conjure is a Traitor thing. I'm okay with that. I don't think that was a bad choice at all. Just, I was kind of hoping that it wouldn't be one of them. But I'm glad at the same time that it is, because that makes it all the more impactful. Honestly, that makes it all the more impactful. So, yeah, uh, this was it. Count Jiro is a traitor. That mystery is finally solved. We can absolve a myriad of other characters. 
Rizo, Kiku, Carrot, Law, even. So, yay. Like, Kanjiro's Traitor, Supernova Alliance, Shabondi, here we go again. There was the last time these three were together was at Shabondi. God, it feels like years, it's because it is years ago. Jesus Christ. <coughs> I cannot wait to see the the havoc these guys are gonna are gonna wreck, and I'm hoping for a full fledged sea battle. We haven't seen many of those in the sea. I mean, we don't have we haven't seen any sea battles. We had that at Whole Cake, but that was kind of more of an escaping scenario. This is this is gonna be proper. They don't mean to escape. They mean to fight. And fight they will. Those ships are big enough. So you have one for each. You the, the, the Polar Tank takes one, the Sunny takes another, and the Victoria Punk takes another. GG. And if more show up, you divide them amongst yourselves. Uh, I think that Kanjiro will be able to flee with Mamonosuke to Onigashima. So and then they'll have to save him in, in Onigashima. And Kinemon has to fight Kanjiro. Like, it'll have to be. Foxfire versus Evening Rain. Fire Cutting Style versus Ink. That'll be fun. But this is it for this week's chapter, my dear friends, my dear viewers. I hope you have enjoyed this chapter. I'm so pumped about it. We will see one another, not next week, but before that, with a little something that might be on preparations. We'll see about that. So... I'll bid you guys farewell and bye-bye.